G'day, I'm Nurchin, and today we're getting a little bit spooky talking about ghosts. Oh Jesus! Now, what is a ghost? Where do they come from? Are they real? These are huge topics and they've been discussed for thousands of years. Now, many don't consider ghosts to be cryptids and anything paranormal to be pure pseudoscience. But it's important to understand these things when looking at future cryptids, as well as considering some we've already seen. And what better time to do it than Halloween? The spookiest part, it's mid-November. So what is a ghost? It's believed when a person dies, their life form carries on to the afterlife. But sometimes they can linger or return in the form of a ghost, spook, spectre, spirit, whatever. They can exist for a variety of reasons, not necessarily good or bad, and they can take the form of different sensory effects. Wisps or balls of light are common, or sometimes a fully formed body of the person who died, often hazy and translucent. Some believe these ghosts live in a plane of existence separate from our own, and sometimes break through to deliver a message or a warning. These are called crisis apparitions. But these apparitions could be demons in disguise, which is why the church has classically prohibited communication with the afterlife. A lot of you already know all this. Ghosts have been popular since forever with characters like Casper, Slimer, Bruce Willis, your keys when you're late for work, that one maze game. But today, I'm going to break down why people think they see ghosts and whether or not they're actually real. So where is the evidence? Here. I mean, it's as good a place as any. Compared to cryptozoology, where it's really rare to get photo evidence, paranormal entities sure aren't camera shy. But why is that? One of the most common examples are these glowing orbs. I hope you weren't waiting for some earth-shattering revelation here. These orbs of light can almost always be explained by flash bouncing off particles of dust, spots of water on the lens, a defect in the sensor, or just a print error. But these apparitions don't always take the form of orbs, no sir. Sometimes faces of fully formed bodies can be seen. Okay, the first explanation straight off the bat is digital editing or even double exposure has been around since the 18th century. A more interesting answer is our base survival instincts to constantly look for faces. Our eyes are always searching for faces and possible threats, which is why they latch onto and make sense of things that are otherwise just a fold of cloth or a trick of the light. I could go on about photography for hours, but many of these witnesses claim they're genuine photographs, so I guess I can't say for certain. If you're interested in some iconic ghost photos, and some are pretty dang spooky, I'd recommend The Ghost of Freddie Jackson, The Brown Lady of Raynham Hall, and The Girl on the Fire. But what about less material evidence? Sometimes you just get a feeling like there's someone right behind you, or you see something you can't explain. Sometimes attributed to a location, like a haunted house. Well, interestingly, some of these haunted houses had gas leaks that caused monoxide poisoning. This could lead to hallucinations and ultimately death. You know, really sealing the deal on the superstition. In some extreme cases, the hauntings were caused by infrasound, a frequency of sound waves so low that it would cause you to feel sick with dread and paranoia. If loud enough, this sound can actually cause your eyeballs to vibrate, causing you to see things out the corner of your eyes. This can sometimes be caused by the hum of machinery, such as an extractor fan that inspired Vic Tandy's paper on the phenomena called the Ghost in the Machine. You may be thinking, we get it, stop dunking on ghosts so hard, but bear with me. So the theory is this, energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? And our nervous system runs off a kind of electricity. So when you die, that energy has to go somewhere. In 1907, a man called Duncan O'Dougal conducted an experiment on the weight of a human body once they died. What he found was, on death, the human body lost 21 grams. Considering energy and electricity has a weight, that was the weight of the human soul. Now, I should note, he only conducted the experiment on six people, five of which didn't support his hypothesis, and it was later noted that on death, a change in body temperature can cause excess sweating and thus the loss of weight. But you know, it's the thought that counts. Now, if we're to believe that ghosts exist, this is probably the most likely explanation, by assuming the human life force is a form of energy. It really lends to the romanticized theory that ghosts are formed when people are taken too young or killed in a passion. If this energy is a quantum particle, it even explains ghosts being able to pass through solid objects. But if you are to believe that ghosts are a form of energy, it definitely doesn't explain why they sometimes look like their former selves, especially with clothes on. Don't know what that's about. Though it does explain it to a degree. 
Kinda. See, the human body can have a lot of reactions to electricity. There are certain parts of the brain that'll act differently when passing through an electric field. If you were to pass through one of these fields, it could explain that tingling feeling like you just got very cold or that there was somebody right next to you. And on a side note, electricity can affect machines and it can produce a sound. But wait, there's more. The brain can also be affected by magnetic fields and the entire earth has its own one called the magnetosphere. During nighttime, the magnetosphere distorts and expands, leading some people to believe this is why ghost sightings are most common at nighttime. And just a quick note on electricity, one of the supposed ghosts I've reported on is Black Shuck, which appeared in the dead of night during a powerful thunderstorm. There's layers to it. Now, a lot of these nighttime encounters can be explained with sleep paralysis or hypnagogic hallucinations, but if you were to believe ghosts are trying to make contact with us, then nighttime makes more sense than just being spooky. At the end of the day, people who believe in ghosts are the ones that see them. It could be cause and effect, who knows. Sometimes your house makes noises at night because that's what old buildings do. And sometimes you feel like you hear a voice of a loved one because you miss them. But are ghosts real? Well, this argument has been going on for a millennia and I'm afraid a definite answer isn't coming from me. But I can tell you this. There's an old theory that a person's spirit never leaves this earth until there is no one left to remember the one who died. If you think you saw, heard or felt something, or received a message from somebody who's passed on, in a way that is their ghost. It's a physical effect on this world through their memory. That's how I see it at least. I mean, ghosts are near impossible to disprove, and I'm sure the arguments are going to rage on. So to get a bit more insight on this ancient topic, I've called in an expert. This man has seen the face of death, and the only spirit he's afraid of is anything in a bottle for less than 10 bucks. I am of course talking about Wendell Elmwood. Over to you, Wendell. Thank you, Nurchin, and hail and well met, my fellow crypto enthusiasts. Today we're scouring local haunted locations in search of a ghost. Personally, I prefer to hunt things I can punch if need be, but, oh, nothing helping that. Come on, Rob, let's go. So, I've been doing my research on how to catch one of these things. Unfortunately, I couldn't afford a proton pack, so I brought my vacuum instead. And as to finding one of these things, I, uh, I have this high-tech piece of equipment to let me hear them. Go away. I, Rob, I can hear one now. Go away. It's speaking some strange language. No, seriously, bugger off. Oh, more investigation. Let's go, Rob. It's so late already and... Oh, that's odd. My sensor just died. Oh, my phone's out of battery too. I think we've done it this time, Rob. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to smash that like, subscribe, and a huge thanks for all the recent support. I'll be sure to update on that one soon. See ya!